Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the HESI. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the HESI Admission Assessment Exam Review, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Right now, we are in the process of solving problems having to do with the notion of division of decimals. Division of decimals. We are on page number 13. We are in the midst of solving the sample problems. With, we have done 1 through 5 already. We will we'll pick up today from number 6. Sample problems. Number 6. Number 6 is telling us to divide 591 by 0.3. Point three. Let's see what we can do, shall we? Before we get into it, before we get into a problem, before we jump into it, I want to point out to you that as you can see, there are only 10 problems there on that page. There are sample problems. 10 problems, in my opinion, is not enough. If you feel the same way, if you feel that you need more help, if you feel that you need more practice, there are more videos that you can watch having to do with division of decimals. There are two of them, T is math. Just type in T is math, day 8 and 9. The math on the T is, is very similar to what you would encounter on the HESI. There's not much different. Watch day number 8 and 9. And then there are three more videos that you can watch if you need more help, even, even more help, in the series of basic math. In the series of basic math, day number 54, 55, and 56. The last uh, remark that you see here has to do with the divisibility rules. You must know your rules of divisibility. You must know your rules of divisibility. You must be able to tell just simply by visual inspection by simply looking at the number, you should be able to tell if a given number is divisible by 2 or 3 or 4 or 5 and so on and so forth. We learn all of those things in the divisibility rules on day number 25 and 26, uh, 25 and 27 of basic math. Let's get going. 591 is simply 591 over 1. And 0 0.3, 0 0.3 is simply, 0 0.3 can be written as 3 over 10. 3 over 10. I'm going to bring this division sign down because it's not lined up now. There we go. We also know that we have, when we have to divide one fraction by another fraction, when we have to divide one fraction by other fractions, we know that we can convert that division problem into a simple multiplication problem by simply taking the reciprocal of the second fraction. So 591, 591 divided by 1 times division problem becomes multiple multiplication problem and now we take the reciprocal of the second fraction, 3 over 10 becomes 10 over 3. Now we simply have to divide top and bottom by 3, if we can. 591, is that divisible by 3? 591, is it divisible by 3? In our, in our divisibility rule, in our divisibility rule, we learn that as long as the sum of the digits is divisible by 3, the number itself is divisible by 3. 591, 5 plus 3. 5 plus 1 is 6, 6 is divisible by 3, and 9 is divisible by 3. So it's divisible by 3. 591 is divisible by 3. Notice what we just did here. Even though the theory requires that you add up all the digits and see if the sum of the digits is divisible by 3, in practice, you can take a shortcut, you can cheat, you can see, you can immediately see that 9 is divisible by 3. 9 is divisible by 3, it plays no role. It is divisible by 3. You simply have to look at 5 plus 1. 5 plus 1 is 6. And 6, of course, is divisible by 3. That tells us that 591 is divisible by 3. 591 is the only divisible by 3. Similarly, 951 is divisible by 3. Similarly, 195 is divisible by 3. Similarly, 159 is divisible by 3. Any of any 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 three-digit number, any three-digit number involving the digits 1, 5, and 9, they will all be divisible by 3. Because 1 plus 5 is 6, 6 is divisible by 3, and 9 of course is divisible by 3. These are all divisible by 3. Let's divide, shall we? Let's divide top and bottom by 3. How many 3's does 5 have? 5 has 1 3. 5 has 1 3. The remaining 2 goes and joins the 9 and becomes 29. The remaining 2 goes and joins the 9 and becomes 29. How many 3's does 29 have? 29 has 3 3's. 3 that's 29 has 9 3's. 9 3's are 27. 9 3's are 27. 9 9 3's are 27. 9 threes are 27. That's how we speak. 9, seven, nine threes are 27. So one more time. 
5 has 1 3, the remaining 2 goes into the 9, becomes 29, 29 has 9 threes. 9 threes are 27. After we use up 27 from the 29, the remaining 2 goes into the 1, it becomes 21, and 21 has 7 threes. That's it, we're done. 197 times 10, the answer is 1970. 1970, 197 times 10. Let's do the next one, shall we? Let's do the next one. Number seven. Number seven is 0 0.72, 0 0.72 divided by 0 0.8. This is number seven. Again, 0 0.72 can be written as 72 over 100. 0 0.8 can be written as 8 over 10. 8 over 10. 8 divided by 10 is 0 0.8 and we have a division sign which is same as 72 over 100 times convert the division into multiplication and as soon as we do that 8 over 10 is going to become 10 over 8 you with me so far? let's divide top and bottom by 10 if we divide top and bottom by 10 this 10 is going to go away and 100 is going to lose one of its zero and now let's divide top and bottom by 8. You must know your tables. You must know your tables by heart. It makes the process go a little bit faster. Otherwise, you're going to end up dividing uh, uh, 2 by 2 each time. You're going to end up doing 3 steps. 2 times 2 times 2. 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. You're going to have to do 3 steps in order to reduce the top and bottom. If you know your tables for 8, you can do it in one shot. How many 8s does 72 have? We know that 10 8s. We know that 10 8s are 80. If 10 8s are 80, if you were to take away 1 8 from 80, 80 minus 8 is 72. 80 minus 8 is 72, which means 72 must consist of 9 eights. 9 eights are 9 eights are 72. 9 9 eights are 72. Let's divide top and bottom by 8. That's it. It goes away, becomes 9. We end up with 9 over 10. 9 over 10, therefore 9 divided by 10, the final answer is 0 0.9. Because what we end up here is, what we end up here is 9 divided by 10. 9 divided by 10 is 0.9. Let's do one more. Number 8. Number 8. Just give me one quick break. Number 8 says 0 0.132, number 8 says 0 0.132 divided by 0 0.11, 1, 1. Don't freak out. These numbers are there for a reason. These are not put together haphazardly. These are not put together haphazardly. These are not put together willy-nilly. These numbers are there for a reason. They are, they are designed in a, in, in a particular way. A lot of thought goes into a problem before it appears on the exam. Do you understand? Like I said, they are not put together willy-nilly. 0.132, so don't just freak out just by looking at the numbers. Just stay calm, stay, stay collected. 0 0.132, 0 0.132, if you want to convert that into a whole number, if you want to convert that into a whole number, we must move this decimal from here, one, two, three spots, right here. How can we move the decimals to three spots to the, to the right? Well, multiply it by a thousand. If you multiply top by a thousand, we must multiply the bottom by a thousand. Because the bottom was one, it was one over that. See, this quantity is that, point, point 0.132 divided by one. That's what that, look at that as a fraction. So now point 0.132 times a thousand is just 132. 132 divided by a thousand. That's what that is. 132 over a thousand. In other words, 132 divided by 1000 is going to give you back 0.132 divided by divided by 0.11 can be written as 11 over 100 you with me so far now we're going to convert our division problem into multiplication problem so it becomes 132 over a thousand times division is going to become multiplication times and take the reciprocal of this guy 11 over 100 is going to become 100 over 11. 100 over 11. Are you with me so far? 
Now we have a hundred on the top, we have a thousand on the bottom, we have a hundred on the top, we have a thousand on the bottom. Let's divide top and bottom by 100. If we divide top and bottom by 100, this 100 gets killed. It's replaced by one. You don't have to write the one if you don't want to. And this one, this 1000 is going to lose two of its zero. It's going to lose two of its zero. Let's divide top and bottom by 11. Let's divide top and bottom by 11. Because we have 11 on the bottom here. Let's divide top and bottom by 10. Leave the 10 alone. Leave the 10 alone. Because any number, you, if you see 10 at the bottom, if you see 100 at the bottom, if you see 10, 100, 1000, any multiple of 10 at the bottom, leave it alone. Save it. Savor it. Leave it. Use it at the, at the very last step. Because any number can be divided by 10 or 100 or 1000 very easily. Save it for that reason. Save it until the very last step. As I said, savor it at the very end. Don't, don't waste it. Don't squander it. Don't end up squandering it. So we're, gonna, we're not going to touch the 10. Let's divide top and bottom by 11. How many 11 does one, one have? One has no 11. One has no 11. That one goes and joins the 3 and becomes 13. That one goes and joins the 3 and becomes 13. 13 has one 11. 13 has one 11. 13 has one 11. The remaining 2 goes and joins this 2 and becomes 22. And 22 has two 11s. And that 11 goes away because we just divided top by 11, we must divide the bottom by 11. 11 goes away, it becomes 1. If you want to write the 1, fine. If you don't want to write it, it doesn't, it really doesn't do anything. Just because we didn't write anything doesn't mean that it's 0, it's 1. 11 divided by 11 is 1. So what do we end up with? We end up with 12. We end up with 12 divided by 10. 12 divided by 10 is just 1.2. Nothing to it. The answer is 1.2. Let's do the penultimate problem. The second to the last problem, number nine. We are told that we have to divide 56 acres. We are told that we have to divide 56 acres. Are divided into lots of 0.25 acres. This is very silly. This is a very silly question. I'll tell you why it's silly. It's a silly question because uh, there's not much in here. There are two different ways we can do it. We can do the problem. We can do the problem in a very academic way, very nerdy, very geeky, very classical, very orthodox, very traditional way, which we'll do it here. Or you can do it intuitively. If you, if you look at it intuitively, you must realize that 0 0.1, 0 0.25 is just a quarter. So if you were to take an acre, if you were to take one acre, if you were to take one acre and chop it up into quarter of quarter of an acre, how many lots will you have? You'll obviously have four lots because four quarters make a make a whole. One quarter, two quarters, that's a half, three quarters, and then one. An acre can divide into a, a lots of a quarter of an acre size, we'll have four lots. If you want to divide 56 acres into quarter acres, it's just gonna be 56 times four. There's nothing in there. It's just going to be 56 times 4. 6 fours are 24, that's 4, carry 2, 2 fives are 5, 5 fours are 20 plus 2 is 22. You'll end up with 224 lots, of course, and even this part was necessary, even this part was unnecessary, because 50 acres, 50 acres when divided into quarter of an acre, that's 200 lots, and other 6 acres divided into quarter of an acre, that's another 24 lots. So 200 plus 24 is 224 acres, 224 lots. So that's one way of doing it. On the way to actually do it out, what they're telling us to do, which is to divide 56, we have to divide 56 by 0.25. You with me? And that's the same as 56 divided by 25 over 100. Because 25 divided by 100 is 0.25. Are you still with me? And 56 is, can be written as 56 over 1. All right? Which gives us 56 over 1 times, convert the division into multiplication sign, and we take the reciprocal of this thing, which becomes 100 over 25. How many hundred, how many, let's divide top and bottom by 25, because 100 is a multiple of 25. How many 25 does 100 have? 100 has 425. And what are we left with? We are left with exactly what we did here, 4 times 56. 4 times 56, that's exactly what we did here. Except, if you can see this, uh, if you can see this logical method, you don't want to do this all this mumbo jumbo. Let's do the very last one, number 10. Number 10. What does number 10 say? 
we have 4.2 liters of fertilizers. Isn't that nice? 4.2 liters of fertilizers and we are told that each tree requires 0.7 liters of fertilizer. In other words, they're asking us to divide 4.2 divided by 0.7 because each tree requires 7 tenth of a liter of fertilizer. The question is how many trees will, be, will we be able to fertilize? Dana has 4. Point, I'm going to read the problem now verbatim. Dana has 4.2 liters of fertilizer if each pecan tree needs 0.7 liters of fertilizer and Dana use, uses all the fertilizers how many pecan trees does Dana have? Well, let's find out, shall we? So I don't know about you. I don't know about you, but the suspense is killing me. I want to find out, damn it, how many trees does she have? I want to know. So 4.2 can be written as 42 over 10 divided by 0.7 can be written as 7 over 10, which is same as 42 over 10 times 10 over 7. Take the reciprocal. Divide top and bottom by 10, it goes away. And how many 7s does 42 have? Again, you have to know your table of 7. You must know your tables 1 through 12, as I have told you many times. You must know your tables by heart. We learn our tables in the first 12 days in the series of basic math, day number 1 through 12. We know that 7, 6 are 42. 7, 6 are 42. Let's divide top and bottom by 7. 7 goes away and 42 becomes 6. She must be, pr she must be a proud owner of half a dozen pecan trees. It does warm cockles of one's heart, doesn't it? I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.